So, um, here's a little project. This um, is my current arm, you probably recognise. And um, the way it works, I've got this bit of aluminium tubing with some uh, brackets to block it so it holds it in position. That means the left hand is a control hand and then it swivels nice and smoothly in there. And then uh, this rubber hook, which is off the shelf, just goes round. Again, you've probably seen me do this. But, yeah, wraps around. Let me flip that over um, there. And what this rubber grip gives me is um, there's a little bit of movement in it, which kind of, as you see, up and down there. Not a huge amount. It's because it's rubber, it's got a bit of flex, so I can get a fair way with it. And I guess what that represents is that kind of motion in the wrist, that flexibility, which is really important when you kind of up in these positions, I guess the whole way through actually, yeah. you're, you're constantly adjusting um, that position. And then the other thing I've created in it is um, the wrist rotation, which you can see is probably um, somewhere in the region, I think I did the mass, about um, 75 degrees rotation there. Um, which is something I sort of increased over time. I started off with none whatsoever and just depended on the kind of flexibility of the rubber, but it was really limiting my stroke. Um, I have found I've gone too far in the past when I've created it um, and I lose control a little bit of the paddle and lose a bit of power. Um, but this unit, I'll, know, I'll show you a broken down version of a second, isn't designed to do that and it kind of wears out um, over time which can be a bit problematic um, and then the other issue I've got with this is I'm now finding this rubber grip isn't that strong a grip around the um, around the shaft and I'm now putting quite a lot more power through it and so um, I'm starting to wear through these a bit quicker um, and again they can uh, snap along here especially some of them come with a very slight fault in them and you can imagine what it's like a little split in the rubber and it doesn't take long for that to open up at all um, in terms of the how i release obviously i just release it in a rush from here i just flick that up which is easy but actually there's a second release here which can take the um take the whole wrist unit, um, hand unit off, um, which is something that will become apparent in a second. Um, and then the other thing to note, obviously I've got the, the angle in the arm, um, which is probably quite good in terms of where, where um, the angles I'm putting my shoulder at is still not quite the same as my left arm, but replicates it a little bit. Um, but what it does mean is it's kind of a, a midway point between, you know, I can't get full reach that way um, when, I'm, when I'm putting the stroke in on the right hand side. And again, um, when I'm putting the stroke in on the left hand side and this right arm becomes top hand, it doesn't bend quite so much. Um, so it's just in that kind of halfway position the whole time and that obviously affects the angle that the um, that the shaft the blade is going into the water and another thing is actually um, this arm is a bit shorter um, than that one and so what I do um, to compensate for that is offset my grip on the blade so um, the distance from my right hand to the tip of the blade is um, is greater than from my left hand to the tip of the blade on the other side um, and that's 
fine to a point. Um, what it does mean is that my left hand, when it's the top hand, has to deal with quite a lot more pressure um, because there's a bigger lever there at the other end. Um, but I, I don't think that's too big a problem, um, in all honesty. Um, I, I think I can cope with that. But the other thing I would say about having that bend in the elbow is um, obviously what it does do, if we think of this hole here as being um, the centre, um, when it's on my arm and I'm pushing that way or, or that way, um, by having that angle there, I'm giving a bigger rotational lever um, for the arm, which affects how it fits, how the socket fits onto my, um, onto my stump. So I guess what happens is over time with a bit of sweat and everything else in there, I'm just creating um, another, um, another range of movement, which is slowly um, letting the arm slip off and affecting the fit a little bit. Um, so Ollie Blackwell um, kind of had a look at this problem for me and he, um, he came up with this design and um, basically so I've got this shorter version of the arm which I use for the gym um, and basically I can put different attachments um, into here and Ollie created this elbow and forearm um, and wrist unit there and his idea was um, that basically would use elastics and sort of play around a little bit um, with those elastics um, to recreate my tricep. And um, when you sort of stood up and you've got your blades in your hand and you're not in the water, um, the motion that it creates, and I can show you a little video of us testing it um, until a part broke, um, actually feels really nice. But then I realised the issue is I've actually got no control over when that elbow breaks um, and then straightens. Um, and I think what would happen is if I put a stroke in on that right side, the elbow would just start to bend anyway and I'd lose a whole load of power there. Um, and then actually it would probably straighten um, too early out here so it wouldn't stay in that bent position and then um, straight straighten at the end um, over there. What I do love about this design though, I think um, his design of the wrist unit and hand is really cool. So um, I don't know if you can see, it's all quite small in here. I've got, and I can probably get them off Ollie if I haven't, uh, the drawings for it. So that rotation that I was saying I just get from the, sorry, the rotation that I created, um, he's, he's put in there and um, then the rotation, the wrist flexion, again, he's designed in. Um, and then I think having a, a solid arc, and what we didn't do with Ollie is decide exactly on the grip, but I don't think this would be the sort of final clamping system. I don't think this would be too difficult to design. Um, But I do quite like the idea of having something solid that feels like I've got a nice tight grip, but it's loose enough that it will swivel on its own, a bit like the aluminium um, grip does. Um, and then we just need to find a way of clamping it on the other side, um, ideally with a, with a quick release system. And again, another thing I like is the idea of this being quite narrow like that. Um, so what it does mean is, especially in the C, um, you get sort of sand and salt gets in here and um, clearly it causes wear but also can cause it to jam at times so being a bit narrower um, it gives um, it makes it a bit easier to rinse that out um, and also what I like is um, again probably for on the sea is the idea that um, actually I could have a couple of these little clips in position here um, maybe have three of them instead of just two and it could give me two different positions. Um, so if I wanted to extend or shorten my paddles um, in a, during a long race, um, I would have that ability to do that. And it would just be a case of unclipping, reclipping on the other end. Um, and again, what his does is 
um, the hook comes all the way um, round, so it would have um, you'd lose less power there. Um, whereas if you look at this design, obviously the hook doesn't come all the way around. So I'm just depending on this rubber strap, which has got quite a lot of flex in it, um, to hold that in place. So that seems like, you know, with the final clamping, um, final clamping bit in place, whatever that is, would be a sort of slightly stronger design and I'd lose less. Um, so clearly the, the issue with the elbow is about control of it. And I was really sort of racking my brains trying to work out how to do this. Yeah. Could we do it like some of my knees with hydraulics um, where you can um, control the extension and flexion differently um, and they can also, you can sort of almost create breaking points in, in them so it will support, support, support and then break and then hold it and then, you know, um, and then extend um, a bit of time afterwards. But the problem with that is that it will be quite heavy and clearly really difficult to, um, or a lot more complicated to design and manufacture. And um, as I sort of think about it more and more, I was thinking, well, what's the purpose of the elbow um, breaking and bending? It's not as we know to create power um, there so much, because um, we want to keep the arm straight through that. I don't need to explain that to you guys. Um, it does allow for a slightly quicker release out there by being able to bend the elbow. But I think, you know, with my, I've just had to get used to it. I can do that reasonably quickly using my shoulder. But what I realise is the real difference is by bending the elbow, you're adjusting the distance between your hand and your shoulder. So from there to there. And, you know, that's probably over exaggerating, but probably for most of us when we're paddling, there's maybe, I don't know, eight inches um, that you're going from not quite extended to back there somewhere, you know, maybe a little bit more. Um, but at the moment I have zero difference. So I kind of see anything that's better than zero is going to benefit me. Um, and so I had a bit of a thought about how maybe I could overcome this. And the idea was is um, if I had a forearm that was um, you know, par parallel, cylindrical, um, rather than tapered like this, and actually it was in two parts, so telescopic, um, and what I would have is um, basically a, a, you know, a channel and a guide, um, so the, the channel and the outside up. Um, sleeve of it say in the guide on the inner arm and that that channel would you know I don't know if we could manage four inches long as you, know, you guys would need to think about the the strength of the materials here and the leverage but maybe say four inches long but instead of just being straight along um, was offset um, so um, from here to here say um, and what that would do is it would mean um, I control this rotation on the wrist just with the position of, you know, comparative positions of my, my hands and my shoulders. I would still be using that, but we set it up in such a way where um, when this hand's high and this hand's low, um, the, the channel guides the, the hand the, or the forearm to fully extension. And then at the other way, way when um, this hand's high and this hand comes low, um, the channel guides the forearm back in. And so all of a sudden I've got a better angle because it's shorter um, here and I'm keeping that positive blade angle there. And then I've got further reach um, when I'm in this position. Um, and so I'm controlling that lengthening and shortening um, with my natural position. It should flow quite nicely. Um, I kind of try to draw a diagram here but I'm rubbish at this stuff um, but I can send it through to you anyway and I had a few questions um, 
So the questions I came up with were, um, how long does the overlap need to be on the, on the sleeves um, of the forearm and able to you know, maintain the strength and what do we think the maximum um, change of range or the maximum range we can get is. Um, and then the other question is, you know, should I keep the elbow bent as it is um, or should actually we just keep it straight to remove those rotational forces that I was talking about earlier. Um, and again, I guess there's um, everything with me is imperfect. There's always there's always a payoff, um, you know, pros and cons. So um, the pro of keeping it straight is that I remove those rotational forces, um, but the con is that my um, yeah, I think my my left my right arm sorry the shoulder position is going to be slightly different so i'm going to have to bring it a bit higher really but i was thinking about that the the range of shoulder movements going to be exactly the same it's just the whole thing's going to be lifted up slightly um, from what it is now um, so my personal thought is keep it straight um, but i'd be interested to know what your your thoughts are um, and I guess, you know, the only other things, you know, thinking about that range of shoulder movement is, you know, if this was a cylinder, could we sort of slightly adjust where, where the grip, the hook, whatever that looks like, um, is on the cylinder. So um, does, it, um, does it sit off centre and does that compensate for some of that shoulder movement um, slightly? But when I've thought about it... Um, I don't think there's any benefit to that because I think well you'd get benefit in one movement but then um, a cost in in the other movement so benefit one side cost in the other side so I think probably keeping it more central um, might be the solution I don't know so I guess yeah the, the thought was that um, if I did put it off center and had it so say when my top hands coming across the um the grip is sitting above it instead of there um that means my top hand doesn't need to come slight so high you know it's only a few degrees difference um but then when um the right arm becomes the bottom hand it would be sitting on the outside of it there and my only slight worry is that i would need to um make my stroke make my blade entry slightly wider um than it currently is into the boat because otherwise I'd catch the boat with the um you know the inside of the wrist but I guess you know in reality the you know the offset's going to be an inch or so so it's not a big deal um and again you guys can probably think about your your paddle entry and know better than me where it should be and how close it should be and whether or not um going very slightly wider you know an inch wider is is worth it or not um I think that's it. So the only other thing, yeah, I was just going to show you a breakdown of that current system. So um, I kind of guess that there's kind of two phases. One's just trying to improve the, the grip. That's probably a relatively quick fix and we can probably do in this country. So um, what you've got in the forearm is one of these rings is just laminated in and I've got spare ones of these so I can send them to you. Um, and then um, once that's laminated in, the whole wrist unit slots in. You see it's sort of screwed in. Um, you can see I've got the little um, Allen key bolts, so it's bolted in there. Um, and then I get these little bayonets with the holes in, um, and they just screw on. Um, They screw on, and what I do, um, I'll show you here, is the way I create the rotation is I take some of the holes and I basically just um, get some burrs and join the holes together and make it so that then rotates and then the little lug there 
snaps. But as I say, it's it's not really designed to do that. It all kind of gets a bit worn down um, and eventually comes loose and kind of jams up. Um, and I've had a few slightly disconcerting moments in my Technic where that's happened to me and um, I'm then having to try and keep my Technic upright when I can't actually use my my blades, which I don't particularly enjoy. See, so yeah, it's back in position now. Um, and then what I've done is, what happens where that wears a little bit, I just um, cut a little bit of PTFE um, and use it as a little washer there. So um, that seems to make it last a little bit. Um, yeah. And then of course, yeah, so Again, what I do is these actually come with little ball bearings that are spring loaded in there. So I take off this top cap and I remove those ball bearings and it just allows everything. They're designed to kind of um, slot into the holes and just create a little bit of friction. And I don't want that friction, so I get rid of it. Um, and you can see the system there. It, um, it just clips and then this little lever on the side and you push so I think you can probably see that there. there's a, a groove in the bayonet and then these two little spring loaded plates it just slots into that groove and they grip it so you know not the strongest mechanism going i think ideally um the first thought would be good is if the wrist um wrist rotation was beyond this bayonet so somewhere in um in here um, and then that way that system could just um, slot into there um, and i don't know how easy that would be to manufacture and do um, but if that wasn't possible we could still stick with this system but just creating something where um, you know we had the solid part of the hook coming that little bit further um, and um, just strengthening this system up a little bit so it's not quite such a worry and it's taking some of the pressure um, off this rubber um, off this rubber strap here I think that would be really helpful um, yeah, I think that's it for me. Um, let me know if you've got any questions.